What is up Broncos fans, the Denver Broncos show back here again to do another video. In this video I'm going to kind of give I guess a draft preview if you will for the Broncos for obviously the 2014 NFL draft which is now exactly a week away. It's been weird that the draft is now in May and been pushed back a couple weeks. I almost forgot that the draft had yet to still happen but nonetheless we are a week away from the draft and in this video I just want to talk about a couple of prospects that I think the Broncos should target in this year's draft. This is a great draft class. I think this is one of the best draft classes we've seen in the past several years and there's a lot of depth. The Broncos are going to have a ton of options whether they want to trade up from that 31st selection or trade out of the first round like they've done in the past couple uh, years in the draft. Now the first prospect I'm going to talk about is Jason Verrett, defensive back out of TCU. Probably my favorite player in the draft and I think one of the most underrated players in this draft and I think three to five years from now Jason Barrett's going to be one of the most talked about players from this draft because of how productive of a player I think he is going to be at the next level. He looks off his athleticism. This is a guy that ran a 4-3-8-40 at the combine, also recorded a vertical jump of 39 inches. You love his combinations of skills and athleticism. I mean, this guy's got great quickness, great feet, um, and again, that athletic ability with that 4-3-8-40, I mean, that's very impressive to say, uh, to say the least. Uh, one of the things I love the most about Jason in Verrett's game is kind of the fieriness he plays. It's a very aggressive cornerback here in Verrett. He's physical at the line of scrimmage. He, he's a scrappy, tough player. And I think that really fits in well with the with what the Broncos have tried to do in terms of reshaping their defense this offseason off season and primarily kind of reshaping the identity of their secondary. You bring in a big physical corner like Aqib Tlaib. You bring in a physical punishing big hit big hitting safety excuse me like TJ Ward and then if you were able to draft a guy like Jason Barrett that just really fits in well with what you're trying to do I think he'd be welcomed uh, with open arms by those guys and again fit kind of the mold of what we're trying to do with our secondary uh, being that kind of scrappy tough physical corner and I just love the fieriness the aggressiveness he plays with um, last season he was named the Big 12 co-defensive co player of the year and he was a three-year starter at TC versatility that he's going to bring this is a guy that can play inside or outside from day one you can put him in as a nickel corner let him develop a little bit have him cover some slot receivers for you and uh, eventually kick him outside and again he's going to give you insurance in case a guy like Chris Harris or Keep Tlaib goes down you can start him immediately I mean he has the skill set and the athleticism to do that and this is a guy he has great ball skills he's got a nose for the ball great awareness uh, extremely high football IQ if you will and he's good against uh, uh, the run he's good in run support he's not afraid to come up and make a tackle and I love that personally out of corners. I love when corners are not afraid to get physical and make plays. Again, I think he's a guy that really kind of fits into the, the culture that we're trying to build here, at least on the defensive side of the football within our secondary. I think he's a guy that Jack Del Rio would love to coach, John Fox would love to coach. I think he'd be immediate fan favorite. Really just fits into what we're trying to do uh, in the back, of it, back end of our defense, being more physical, being uh, a more aggressive, tough secondary next season. And I would love to see the Broncos make a play for Jason Barrett, and he should be available uh, when we pick at 31. You may have to trade up a couple spots to get him, but there is a good chance that he's going to be available at 31. The only knock, though, on Jason Barrett is he's undersized, if you will, for a prototypical number one defensive back in the NFL. He's only 5'9", under 90 pounds. He just has it all across the board. So I think Jason Barrett would be a great addition to our secondary and definitely is a guy that the Broncos should look at uh, when, when they pick 31. Uh, here in the 2014 NFL Draft. Right, now the next guy I'm going to talk about, next prospect, if you will, I'm going to talk about, we got Ryan Shazier, linebacker out of Ohio State. He is six foot one, 237 pounds. In his junior season for the Buckeyes, he was named to the first team All-Big Ten and as well was a first team All-American last season. Uh, Ryan Shazier is, is just a disruptive force at the linebacker spot and would be a, a great addition to our front seven and fill an immediate need for us. Everyone knows that the Broncos have had a need at the inside linebacker spot primarily for the past couple seasons and he's a guy that would fill that void for us. You love the versatility he brings because he can play inside or outside. You love the pass rushing ability that he has. He's got a very impressive get off first step on that line of scrimmage. He's disruptive. Like I said, he's always in the backfield whether he's sacking the quarterback or you know getting tackles for loss. He's making plays. He's a disruptive force. And you love the athleticism this guy has for a line at 237 pounds, he ran an unofficial 4-3-6-40 at his pro day. Let me say that again. Ryan Shazier, linebacker, 237 pounds, ran an unofficial 4-3-6-40 at his pro day. That is freakish 
freakish, freakish speed for a linebacker, let alone a guy that size. And he also had a 42-inch vertical jump, which is a save. You love that athleticism because he's going to have the ability to cover guys in space, whether it be wide receivers or tight ends. That's something we obviously need. The Broncos uh, have been killed by opposing tight ends for the you know past couple seasons. And Ryan Shazier is a guy that you could bring in to help uh, kind of solve that problem. He's a three-down linebacker, which you love to see. He has that ability to cover sideline to sideline. He is a sideline to sideline defender. And he's an impactful hitter. I mean, he lays the wood on guys. And if he hits you, you're going to feel it. And, uh, again, is a guy that's a disruptive playmaker. And I love that he has pass rushing ability because I think at some point or another you're going to see the Broncos have to you know target a defensive end or, or an outside linebacker add another pass rusher because of kind of the question marks surrounding Von Miller with his off the field crap as well as him coming off a torn ACL and then obviously we all know DeMarcus Ware is no spring chicken no offense to DeMarcus Ware love having him on our team but we know he's tapering off sort of so to say and is at least at the end of his career to say the least is, is coming to the end of his career and we're going to need some depth uh, at that you know defensive end spot or linebacker spot just bringing in a guy with pass rushing ability and Shazir has that again this guy's got a great uh, first step off the line he's really raw and and I think under a great coach like Jack Del Rio um, I think you know the, the the over aggressiveness if you will the the sloppy tackling those are all things you can teach and uh, you know working with a guy like DeMarcus Ware um, working with a guy like Vaughn Miller and again being coached by a defensive coach like Jack Re Del Rio and even John Fox defensive minded coach like John Fox I think would be great for Ryan Shazir Shazir's technique development because he already has the athletic ability to be a, a dominant disruptive force at the linebacker spot for years to come in the NFL and I think he'd be a great addition you plug him right inside next to Vaughn Miller and then on the other side you got Danny Trevithan man that's a nasty linebacking core and, and a, a much improved linebacking core from last year that we had so Ryan Shazir is a guy I'd love to see the Broncos target they're there's probably a good shot he he will be there at 31, but he has been rising up draft boards lately, so it would be interesting to see if maybe the Broncos have to trade up a little bit to get him, but definitely a guy I would love to see the Broncos take. And next player I'm going to talk about, this is a guy that I would love to see the Broncos get. I, I don't know if they really have a legitimate chance to get him at all. He's definitely a player the Broncos will have to trade up if they want, but uh, we got Justin Gilbert defensive back out of Oklahoma State uh, last year in his senior season with the Cowboys. Uh, he was named to first team all Big 12 honors as well as a second team all American honors as well. This is a guy that is, I'm not sure if he is the best corner in this draft, but he is widely considered the the best corner in this draft or the the closest thing to a prototypical shutdown corner, if you will, as big a cliche as that is. But you, you got to like Justin Gilbert's game. I mean, he brings a lot to the table. His athleticism, obviously his speed and quickness are something that you love about his game. He ran a 4.3740, which is ridiculous uh, at the combine. He has that ideal size at six foot, 202 pounds that you like to see uh, for a shutdown corner. And again, he's a very skilled player as well. He has a nose for the ball, excellent ball skills. He had seven interceptions last season for the Cowboys and returned two of those four touchdowns in 2013. He's good in press coverage, and you like seeing that. He uses the size pretty effectively. But he also is a elite return man. This is a guy who had six kickoff returns for touchdowns at Oklahoma City. It's a guy that could fill two needs for the Broncos. And uh, again, it's just kind of your prototypical shutdown corner. I've seen some people, you know, compare him to Patrick Peterson. That's pretty lofty, uh, you know, uh, a lofty comparison and, and lofty expectations for Justin Gilbert. But he has all the tools you want for a shutdown corner, whether it be his physical. Uh, he is a guy that the Broncos have publicly shown interest as well. According to the Denver Post, he did have a private workout with the Broncos, um, so you know there's already a little bit of uh, you know interest there by the Broncos, at least publicly. And uh, the, the knocks on Gilbert, though, are there is questions about his tackling ability. Some people think he's not really a willing tackler and a poor tackler, um, and he's not great against the run. Having to you know move up to 10 or 11 to get him, I'm not sure they do that. But if they can move you know anywhere from 15 to 20 to get up uh, to get Justin Gilbert, I think the Broncos will will definitely consider it. And I think he'd be a great addition. He's got a, a immense upside and I mean team Gilbert would be a great fit again has all the the, the athleticism and, and skills you could want from a, a number one cornerback and you know a, a duo of Aqib Tlaib and Justin Gilbert could be one of the scariest quarterback a uh, cornerback excuse me tandems uh, in the league uh, for years to come all right and now to the last player that I'm going to talk about here in this video this player is probably 
the most ideal selection for the Denver Broncos in this year's draft and is probably the most ideal fit for the Broncos, and that is linebacker C.J. Mosley out of Alabama. He is six foot two, 234 pounds. This guy, again, is the ideal fit and I think the ideal selection for the Broncos to make uh, with pick 31 if he falls there or if they can possibly trade up to get him. I think he'd be a tremendous fit for the Broncos. Look at C.J. Mosley. Last year was named the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. He won the Buckus Award last year, which is designated to college football's best linebacker. Uh, he was named to the first team All-SEC and was a first-team All-American not only last season but also in 2012 as well. Obviously, you love that he comes from a powerhouse program like Alabama under a great defensive-minded coach like Nick Saban. You know that he's well coached up. He's played in a lot of big pressure games. He won two national championships with Alabama. Um, so you love that he has kind of that big game experience. He's a three-down player, which you love. He's a starter from day one. And he's just extremely well-rounded. I mean, there's not many holes in C.J. Mosley's game. He's got the, uh, enough athletic ability to cover from sideline to sideline, which you love. He is a sideline to sideline defender. He can cover tight ends. He can cover wide receivers. He's got great instincts, great awareness, always around the ball, has a nose for the ball. You love his blitzing ability. I mean, this is a guy that does get to the quarterback, so he adds some uh, value there. He's a great tackler, and he's devastating when he hits the ball carrier and is great against the run. He's great at, you know, Getting, uh, getting off a of block, shedding blocks, utilizing his vision to, to see, the, see the ball carrier and then just follows through and punishes him. The leader on the field, which you love that, he's a high character guy. There's been a lot said about his work ethic and his film study and his dedication to that. So you love that as well. He'd be a great presence not only on the field for our team and, and again, be an immediate leader for this defense next season, but also, uh, again, has kind of a presence in the locker room, which you love that. And, uh, again, is a guy that is quick enough to cover tight ends and, and cover in space and is just so well-rounded. There's not many holes in, in his game. He really does everything well. The only knocks on him is he could add a little bulk. You know, he's a little undersized at 234. would like to maybe see him add 5 to 10 pounds, but I don't think it's really that big of an issue. And he's had... Some injury issues as well. I think he had a, a shoulder injury, which kind of kept him out of the combine. So there is some concerns with that. I would love to see the Broncos take C.J. Mosley. And, I mean, just imagine Danny Trevithain, C.J. Mosley, and Vaughn Miller. That is one of the best linebacking corps uh, in the NFL next year for sure from day one. I mean, and, and one of the most athletic linebacking go up corps, excuse me, across the board for sure. So C.J. Mosley uh, is definitely a guy I would love to see the Broncos take. And there's a shot he falls to 31 for sure. There's definitely a chance he'll be there at 31, but there's also a chance the Broncos will probably have to trade up to get uh, Mosley, who's going to be a great player for whoever it gets him. So that's my video, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment below with what you think of all the players I mentioned in this video, and even some players that I didn't. Let me know who you'd like to see the Broncos target in next week's draft, and uh, what do you think are some of the biggest holes and, and needs that we need to fill in this year's draft. So that's my video, guys. Once again, thank you for watching, and as always, go Broncos.